Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week called Black Panther. It's the latest Marvel superhero film that's also part of Marvel Cinematic Universe about a young king from Wakanda who became a superhero known as Black Panther. It stars Chadwick Boseman, Michael B. Jordan, Lapita Nanyo, Thangna Guerrero, Martin Freeman, Daniel Kaluuya, Alita Wright, Winston Duke, Angela Bassett, Forrest Whitaker, and Annie Serkis. It's co-written and directed by Ryan Coogler, who's been best known for directing the film Fruitvale Station with Michael B. Jordan, also with the help of Joe Robert Cole. The movie began centuries ago. Five African tribes had fought over a meteorite that's containing vibranium, which led to one warrior who suddenly becomes the first Black Panther after using the harp-shaped herd by creating the metal and the superhuman abilities that he'll be able to have. And begins to uh, follow the Jabari tribe to, to form Wakanda in Africa. Which then they've been using the vibranium for advanced technology throughout the entire country. But by 1992 in Oakland, California, we meet King T'Chaka, who actually visits his brother, the Jobu, who actually accuses him by working with a black market arms dealer named Ulysses Claus by stealing all the vibranium in Wakanda. So that's what led to all the suspicion that's going on. But then, following King T'Chaka's death, we meet the son T'Challa, who basically returns home to Wakanda to become the next king. He actually lives with um, Nakia, who's his ex-lover, along with his mother Ramonda and his younger sister Shuri. Which, of course, he's been, she's been known for having all the technology, so she's like a scientist here and there. <laughs> well, anyway, at the ceremony, uh, there was a Jabari tribal leader named Mabaku, who challenged T'Challa for a ritual combat. So after all of that, T'Challa suddenly defeats Mabaku and convinces him to yield rather than getting killed during that waterfall scene. So meanwhile we meet two of the villains, Claus and Eric Killmonger Stevens, that they came to steal a Wakandian artifact at a museum, which they teamed up along with Wakabi, which is T'Challa's best friend, and a Kui's lover to urge him to bring Claus back dead or alive. So that's what leads to what, what's going on. So in order for them to stop Claus and and Killmonger's schemes, they had to travel all the way to South Korea, which Claus was about to sell the artifact by all the dealers out there, and that's where we meet a CIA agent named Everett K. Ross. So that's when they they started the fight. They're about to go after Claus in that car chase scene. Yeah, that's where we see uh, Black Panther going. That's, of course, T'Challa just going after him. Now, I know we did saw an earlier fight scene, you know, where... <laughs> He was trying to stop all the other guys um, in Wakanta. Yeah. <laughs> so they tr so they're trying to bring Claus uh, to justice, but then all of a sudden, half of his crew, 
including the Killmonger, had arrived to go after them, which led to everything that happens uh, by stealing all the artifacts that they got. So then it leads to all the secrets that was happening involving the T'Challa's family, including his uncle, and how it all began, and the fact that he actually, we begin to discover that he actually left uh, his nephew behind for several reasons. So then the, um, T'Challa had found a way to actually find out what's going on with all the secrets that's happening. And that's when, when Killmonger suddenly kills uh, the leader, Claws, and now he becomes, as we expected, the son of Najobu. So now he becomes the villain because he was also known as a black ops soldier who actually kills everyone you know, while he was a soldier around the country. So now he's he becomes a takeover to to go after T'Challa and now so that way he can become king and do exactly what everyone says which led to that battle between the two but luckily for T'Challa he survived after um, being unconscious the whole time only to be found by Mabaku so now it was up to him to finally reveal himself as Black Panther to to stop him with, with the help of his crew. Yeah, I, I know, it wasn't perfect for me to explain. I mean, it's kind of hard to actually keep up uh, with the the story of what the film was really about, but I'm glad I, I kept it right through. So I know I'm not perfect on that one. But I thought it was fun and entertaining, nevertheless. I mean, despite of its flaws, that I have with the film, especially with the villains that was played by uh, Annie Serkis and Michael B. Jordan. Um, now, they were okay. I was expecting that maybe uh, Claus was going to be the leader throughout the entire film, with Killmonger being his uh, sidekick, because he was also working together with all the other crew right here just to steal the the artifact of Wakanda. Claus actually had, he had an awesome blaster on his arm because yeah we did learn that uh, he actually has a fake arm but he gets to use it so he'll be able to uh, fight and shoot and of course he, he basically just have all these uh, crazy antics that he was going for. I mean there's even a scene where he was actually singing the song, uh, What is Love by Hathaway, in that one scene. But unfortunately, he wasn't on screen enough, and he got killed really early. Yeah, I hate to spoil that surprise. So then they just had to focus on Killmonger, the character that's played by Michael B. Jordan. Um, he did have the ability... But I think the character could have been written a whole lot better, mostly because he acts more like just a, a typical uh, obnoxious jackass and a complete asshole. I mean, you just wanted to hate the character so much because of the way he acts. I mean, granted though, he was a black ops uh, soldier. I mean, he did a lot of killing over there you know, throughout his entire life. Because, you know, he's, he was a young soldier and that's what he's been fighting for ever since. The fact that he becomes a villain is just, it could have been done so much better. But again, you know, at least he tried. Uh, as for the heroes, uh, I would say um, Chadwick Boseman did a great job uh, playing uh, T'Challa and Black Panther. It was great to see him actually uh, doing all these... Uh, amazing the stunts and all the fight scenes that he does and yes I even love uh, his charisma at times especially <laughs> that line which I know you already hear it in the trailers yeah when they told him do me a favor don't freeze <laughs> and he just says 
I never freeze. <laughs> uh, I, I thought that was amazing. It had the best car chase scene too, especially when, when the, his younger sister, Sherry, who was actually played by um, Lolita Wright. I mean, she she's basically one of the smartest scientists ever. Even though you know she just bicker around like just your typical sister. But he, she really has all the cool gadgets that she got, especially when she actually had a holographic um, black Lexus car, which she gets to ride in there by using that, and so that way she'll be she'll be able to control the black Lexus while Black Panther is there, so that way they chase around against uh, claws, which they were inside uh, one of the cars, so they had that amazing chase scene all the way around the city in the country of South Korea so that was amazing uh, I love that um, uh, it was great to see all the other actors uh, working in the movie like uh, yeah, you got the supporting cast of uh, Forrest Whitaker and Angela Bassett along with Lupita Nanyo as Nakia yeah was we all learned that he was his former lover in the movie. You now she's a spy. She goes around completing all the missions that she had to take with all the risks that she had. And also teaming up with everyone too. So they were all good. Really enjoyed that. So they, they actually had a lot of CGI effects in the movie. Um, not much of practical effects as we expected, but maybe just a few here and there, but not as much, which I guess that was a shame. Um, even during the um, the climax scene, I mean, it, there was a huge battle, you know, between the, both sides, you know, Killmonger and, and Black Panther, right there. So that led to that. Um, also, you got Martin Freeman in the movie, which is kind of interesting because now you see, yeah, two uh, cast members from from Lord of the Rings and and The Hobbit to be in this movie. So at least they're just playing different characters in a way. Um, some great costumes and all the designs that they had for the film. It just works. Great music, wonderful score that they got. Uh, everything they were going for, I mean, they, they it really worked. So, um, but yeah, and, and then all the dark secrets that went into it, um, from the story, yeah, that's where it does become pretty predictable. It's worth watching. Out of all the um, the superheroes out there that we got. Um, it's good that we get something like this for a change. I mean, even for for diversity that's going on. I, mean, I don't want to get into any of this political stuff since I know the film went for it too. But all I had to say is um, I love the direction also uh, by um, director Ryan Kugler. I think he did a great job for what he was given. And it's a good thing he did. I mean, considering that he directed um, the movie uh, Food Real Station, which also stars Michael B. Jordan. I mean, because he did a good job in that film, too. So this was the first time he ever directed a superhero film, so it's perfect. Check out the film. Um, you'll enjoy it. Um, try to ignore everything that's going on. And just have fun. I mean, no matter what. I know there have been a lot of superhero films that follow before this. Now, I know Black Panther's been around for a long time. Granted. For the comics. And and it, it was great to see um, Black Panther again. You know, after his appearance in Captain America's Civil War. So it's... So Chadwick Boseman did a great job uh, playing Ron really proud of it so 
Anyway, uh, check out Black Panther. It's worth watching. So I give the film four stars. I'm Josephine Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.